Hi guys, my name is Robert Dahlstrom, aka Robin. I'm a former CS professional player, also a former coach of Face Clan. Welcome to Acer Training Video, where I will talk about some basic strategies and uh, some other fun stuff. Some key strategies that you need to have if you want to have a want to be a good team is obviously a very good first pistol run, right? And then you want to have a really good force buy when you're low on cash. That's the round when you're putting everything you have into one tactic and you really want to win that round because normally when you do this force buy, it's about resetting your opponent. So that's a very key round to have. The reason you're force buying is to reset the economy on the other side because then they need to have an econo economical round. So if you lose a round in CSGO, you don't get that much money. You get 1400. If you're losing a few rounds in a row it builds up first round you're losing you get 1400 then you get 1900 and it keeps going like that in the same amount all the time up to five rounds right that's what it's all about when you play CS to reset your opponent that's that's where we're gonna go you don't want to let your opponent have too much money because then they can re rebuying all the time until you're gonna be screwed basically so it's a very economical, ga economical game and you need to just focusing how much money the opponents have all the time so one thing is uh, as a coach that I used to do is I always try to see you know, why are we losing? As a player, it can be very frustrating to be down uh, you know, if you're down 0 to 8, that's very, very frustrating as a player. But, you know, the game can actually be closer than that. Even if the score is 0 8, 0 7, there can be a few tight rounds, right? But you need to explain to the players, you're doing fine. You're losing the clutch rounds. Let's go. Let's keep going because it's only the beginning of the match. You can still grind some rounds. You know, you need to you need to always be positive. You have to remove the negative feeling you have and just focus on the positive positivities. So force by is obviously very important, but I'm also going to talk about some key strategies when it comes to when you're down. You know, if you're down 0 to 7, or something like that, you need, it's very important to, to show you guys what I mean with that. Before jumping into this video, I'm gonna try to explain a few of the terms I'm using here. So the terms I'm using is uh, trading, which uh, means that you're trading off your opponent skill-wise. I also use nades, which means uh, grenades. And I'm also gonna explain a little bit more about faking means. So I will do my best to explain a force buy that we used to do back in the days. This is with the old lineup, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna explain to you what we're doing here. So uh, this is a double B fake on Mirage uh, into a contact A place. So it's it's a bit advanced and you need to have a lot of nades doing this. So if you wanna buy a couple of pistols and then you buy a couple of nades, you will be able to do this round. First off, we're starting to throw the nades in B, which means we do a smoke wall in B, we throw the flashes. And when that happens, the CTs will throw away their Molotovs and flashes because they are afraid it will be a B go, obviously. And the reason for that is when they're trying to retake A then, cause this tactic will end up in A, they will not have any nades to retake with. So you're gonna see how this works out. Here we go. They're throwing the smokes, flashes, and you can see the rotation on the map. Uh, the CTs is counter flashing and counter smoking, uh, also Molotoving. Now the CTs is not over rotating at all actually, but they did smoke A apps and they flashed slope. So they have wasted a couple of nades. Um, and that's good because we are gonna go to A contact play. And now they are very afraid. First of all, they think it's a fake now. Uh, they don't know anything what we will do. We throw nades in B, but we didn't go. So they are very confused. What, what are they doing? They're probably thinking. But now we're getting ready for the double fake, right? So now we're faking B again. You see, here we go, boom, boom, boom. And now they rotate. You see the vice all the way to seat spawn and Kirby is playing here in the stairs. Uh, they have one guy out of a position in A. And if you get that guy, you need to trade this guy off as soon as possible. So that's why we're going contact play now, because it's easy to trade him. And when you trade him, it's gonna be a 4-on-4 four four if he gets even one kill. And you're in a very good position to win the round, because the CTs in B side, they wasted the nades. Uh, they don't have many nades for, re for retake. When you're faking, you're actually throwing grenades. I'm calling it nades, but it's actually grenades. You're throwing them on one side of the map. And what happens then is that your teammates on TeamSpeak or whatever voice program you're using, is gonna say, it's B, it's B, or something like that. Maybe you will not have as panic as a professional player, but as a beginner, it's very easy to call out that it's B or A. You know, whatever it is. So the whole point with a fake is to make your teammates rotate, right? And it's all based on the information you get in the voice program. Also about trading, that's one of the most important thing in, in Counter-Strike is when you're, you're trading the kills basically. So you're going together, uh, let's say that the, your opponent's getting one kill and you trade him directly after that. So you, your opponent should never get more than one kill, that's a plan. That's the whole thing as a terrorist to trade off the CTs all the time so you can get into the site in an advantage. All right guys, I'm gonna try to explain to you a very fast tactic that we used, uh, that we're actually still using sometimes. Uh, we're under, we're down 0-3 to MLBR here. And um, this is a very, very fast A tactic. We have two people rushing mid. Uh, it's gonna be a fast smoking window. It's also gonna be uh, flashes towards short and window and connection. 
Uh, the only problem I can see right now in the tactic is that Rain and Kerrigan isn't together. Uh, if the opponent had one guy in connector now, they could basically just kill Kerrigan without us trading. That would be pretty bad. We're lucky now that the CTs doesn't uh, have anyone there, so the tactic uh, will still work, hopefully. All right, so right now, if you can take a look, we're in a very, very good position. We have two guys in, uh, in connection ready to trade Fur. We also have two guys in slope and one guy in A apps. Those guys are just ready to go on the contact of the guys in mid now. So when Rain and Kerrigan will get contact, hopefully trade off fur, they will just go together and try to trade the guy on A side. That's the whole point. Trade the guy on A side, get into good position, get the bomb down and win the after plan. That's the whole plan with this. Uh, basically every round, ta every tactic you're doing ST. But yeah, uh, as you can see, Exactly what happened is that Fur killed one guy in connection. Unfortunately, Kerrigan couldn't trade him, but Kerrigan got the guy in A instead. So we're still in a great position here. We have three guys going towards A side. We have the whole site basically just because of one kill. And we have also Finn lurking now in uh, in connection. Lurking means that he's gonna try to survive. He's gonna play the, the smart game here. He just needs to survive because it, as long as he survives, there's gonna be word about him all the time. We're gonna see how this ends. Nico, everyone is just killing everyone. We have the whole side. There are two people left. They have one guy left and it did, the round is over. But this tactic, which is so good, is a surprise tactic, right? They have no clue what's happening. It's very fast. We're going two people middle, getting into connection very fast. The guys in A are ready to go on the contact. It's very basic, but it's very good if you want to surprise your opponents. All right, for anyone that doesn't understand why I'm looking at this in the overview mode, it's because it's so much easier for me to, or for everyone, to realize what everyone is doing. It's a team game. You need to know what your teammate is doing. It's not only about yourself. It's very important that you realize that, you know, your teammate is equally important as you. So you need to know what everyone is doing in the tactics. Uh, that's the whole point with a tactic, uh, that, you, that you need to know what everyone is exactly doing. And then you need to communicate what you're doing as well. But that's the reason. You can see everything in the overview as well. You can see where the guy is aiming towards, you can see the smokes, you can see the smoke screens, the flashes, and it's basically so much easier to get the full picture in overview, uh, overview mode. Every player in, uh, in the team is uh, equally important, right? But there is also different roles in, in a team. I think the most important role is to have a leader. You need to have an in-game leader that's calling the shots, he's calling the tactics, he's doing the mid-round calls, he's making all the decisions basically and playing for, for your team, you know? He's normally not a guy that uh, frag or kill everyone, he's more the smart guy and sacrifice a bit, have a bit worse positions as CT. Normally, you know, not worse, but it can be the boring positions. The boring position can be, for example, B on Mirage. Uh, not so many people like that because it's not so much action there, you know, it's basically just playing smart and, and for your team. You also need to have an, a sniper, an AWPer, uh, who's normally gonna play AWP all the time. Then you need an aggressive player and a def defensive player to have a good mix of players. You know, if you had four aggressive players, it, it wouldn't work because everyone would just go for a place and go for information plays and it, it just wouldn't work. Maybe for one match or two matches, but in the long run, no. So it's very important to you, you have these different roles put together into a team that, you know, that, that click. And that's when you have a unit, a team, forming the team play, the communication and listening to your leader. That's what counter is all about. All right, so try to explain this more, uh, what everyone is ex exactly doing here. I'm gonna try to explain to you uh, how it works. So. We have a very aggressive player in our team that's called Rain. He's normally the guy that goes first, entering, and always rushing first. Doesn't really care about anything else except rushing. Uh, he will be middle here and, and rush middle. Uh, we also have the Opper, who's normally trying to be in a position where he can take out the other Opper on another team. And on this map, on Mirage, it's very, very normal for, for the Op to play in a CT spawn, which uh, this guy will not do right now, but normally that's the position where the CT Op will play. Uh, so Guardian will go slope, get a flash, and will peek towards CT spawn and try to get the, the other Opper down. Uh, while Rain is rushing mid to, together with Kerrigan, who is the team player, the leader. He's trying to sacrifice himself for Rain in this situation. Uh, then we also have Nico that uh, will go A apps because that's one of his special moves that he always loved to do. Nico's aim is basically the best in the world. So if you're playing A apps, you can get into a really good position, playing off your teammates, uh, their contact play, and, and stuff like that. So 
uh, this exactly round is a perfect example of the roles we're having in this team. You can actually see here that everything works as according to the plan. I think even Guardian gets an op frag to the guy short here, but he, he gets an op frag, but he's playing very, very aggressive here because the round is basically already over. But it's very important to have the right guys in the right position and you're trying to do that all the time. I think that's the key to success. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you want to take your game to the next level, you should check out Acer Training Room website. Uh, a link will be down here below. There's plenty of other videos just like this one but for another game on their website so be sure to check them out and I hope you have a great day